Um, I really have to give it up to the D. I feel like that's the expected answer, but truly they gave me every shot I wanted to see. It's very easy to make those saves when they make that look like a beach ball because it's coming out from so far entirely contested. So they, they knew the plan, they stuck to it, they did a great job. Coach said you were seeing the ball really well, like laser focused. I mean, what's it like for the defense, obviously, to create that and for you to just have such a good vision? How, what, what difference does that make? For yeah, um, I mean, obviously, my job is to see the ball and stop it. So that's the most important <laughs> thing. And I had a, had a good day seeing it. And then when those shots are coming from further out, too, it just makes it that much easier, more time to track it. And then you just kind of keep piling on. Your, you feel like you're seeing it better. You're making more saves. Now you're seeing it better. It just keeps going from there. How did it feel to? Syracuse at home after last season? Yeah, it seems like we always have to see Syracuse at some point. Um, freshman year, I wasn't in cage yet, kind of riding the pine, and we beat them here in the Elite Eight. So it was cool to see that kind of come full circle. And obviously, we had a score to settle after last year, even after this year. An overtime loss, we know, or overtime victory, we knew we could be better. So it was nice to kind of stick it to them a little bit. Was yeah. that anything, oh, sorry, <laughs> was there anything that Coach emphasized going into this game that you saw play? dividends throughout the game as a whole? Yeah, I mean, I think we had beaten Syracuse once, but we knew that we needed to continue to adjust, continue to assess. Um, Coach Trainer's amazing. No team's going to be the same as they are at the end of the season as they were at the beginning. We saw them early. So we really wanted to know our opponent, um, but also stick to our plan. We've been really dialing in the defense and focusing on some new things offensively. So we focused on that and just stuck to what we were knowing how to do. You were facing shot after shot in that first half, four saves in the first, four saves in the second. What was going through your head at that point? Um, I was just excited. I mean, that's as a goalie, that's what you want to do. You want to set your team up for success. The offense was putting it in on the other end. So the defense, we just took it upon ourselves to be like, okay, they're executing down there. Let's make sure we're doing our job down here. And luckily today, that worked very much in our favor. And I have to ask something. I've asked, um, I've asked Lauren this, I've asked Coach this. Um, before every game in the tournament, silent protest and solidarity with, with Delaware State with Howard. Um, what, what's the message that you and your teammates want to send with those protests um, with, you know, like, with all the other teams that are doing it as well. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm just extremely proud of the entire NCAA for taking a stand and doing that. I think the biggest thing we can do is use our platform. Um, not everyone maybe feel com feels comfortable talking about the actual problem, but obviously they were racially profiled in a way that's absolutely inexcusable. And as a lacrosse just community, we're growing to diversify the game. We're trying to do the right things. And we need to stand by those that have a more diverse team and are doing those things, making those steps, providing those opportunities for players. And I'm just entirely happy that the NCAA as a whole has stuck together, continue to do it. It's obviously amazing to go on social media after a game and see every other team doing it. And I just hope at very least the, the fundraising links that we're sharing and all that are making a dent and doing the little bit that we can do. And obviously we're just constantly learning how we can do more as well. And heading into the tournament, a couple tough losses to Rutgers in Maryland. How do you think those set you up for success in these past weeks? Yeah, I mean, you learn from your mistakes, I think. Sometimes you do have to be humbled, and those are two very talented teams, and we, we dropped some games that we know we could have won, we know we can be the better team. So I think we took it upon ourselves to reevaluate, to grow from that, and I think we've done a really tremendous job in kind of coming into our own and developing from those moments. So we don't want to repeat that. We want to grow from it, and I think we've kind of made a good step in that direction today. You mentioned earlier, just about the first time you played Syracuse this season, about how you guys could have been better. What were some of the biggest adjustments defensively you guys made? Um, I think we kind of assessed their personnel. Obviously, they had a huge loss this season, and Emma Tyrell, who was amazing for them um, at the start of the season. So it was, I mean, it's always great to play against a great opponent. It was unfortunate to not have her out there today. But we really dialed into personnel. We've been focusing a lot on 1v1 defense and just doing our job as an individual, individuals in that greater system. And we really applied that today, and it worked more effectively against their style of offense. Going back to her question from before, I mean, what do you remember about that game in May of 2021, and uh, you know, how does it feel not only to you know take revenge on that game, but to play such a large part in it like you did today? Yeah, I mean, we're not done, so I can't fully speak to that yet, um, and I don't want to be until Memorial Day and I'm lifting a trophy. So I think for today, it was just nice to put together a team win. I think in that game, we in every part of the field, we had issues, and we we dropped off, including my own. I had a lackluster performance, and I apologized to my team after that game. I knew I wanted to be better, so to be able to take some ownership and chip away from my side, from our defensive side, even the draw, the attack, everyone really stepped up and showed that what happened last year will not be something we tolerate again. That's a big weekend for Northwestern women's uh, sports on campus. We've got two postseason postseason events. Um, what does that mean just around campus for the Northwestern community? You've got lacrosse today, and then we've got 
uh, softball this weekend. I mean, how huge was that? Yeah, I mean, I'll be at the J this weekend. Um, <laughs> I love watching softball, the softball team play. I think the best thing about today was field hockey, yelling and cheering from their field as they were warming up. So that was just exciting. They've obviously done it. They've set the tone this year. So we're trying to follow Coach Fuchs and do the same thing. And we're wanting softball to do the same, I think. The culture around Northwestern athletics has been amazing in the last couple of years. It's only been growing. And obviously, we kind of have that perennial power. But at the same time, every year is a new year. And right now, we keep joking that field hockey is the best team on campus. So we're just trying to hold a candle to them. Softball is doing the same thing every team currently playing. And it's just it's a fun environment. Everyone's supporting each other in a great way. How does it feel to go back third straight Final Four parents and now have Lauren, Jill, Allie, and Brennan leading the way? What does that yeah. mean to have them back? Uh, I mean, it's an honor. I mean, we kind of came in my freshman year, Lauren's class, they were just the sophomores, right? Mm -hmm. But they kind of took us under their wing. So to keep pushing with them for them, obviously, this is their fifth year um, due to COVID. The, the seniors all have a chance to come back if they choose to do so. And, and these guys chose to use it. And it's just awesome to play for them with them. And there's really nothing more you can say about the Final Four. Like, that's what you dream of as a little kid. Um, and to be there every time, it's a crazy atmosphere. I think we're just going to kind of poke the freshman a little bit and be like, hey, enjoy the moment, but also realize like we're not done yet. Mm -hmm. We're not there to enjoy the moment. We're there to seize the moment, we're there to execute, and we're there to have great moments after when we get to celebrate. Allie Palermo spent a lot of the day guarding Megan Tyrell. What did her, her impact look like, and how did that help you? Yeah, she's done a great job the last couple games of just having those strong matchups. She has a great 1v1 defense, and we talk about it. She asked me before the game, hey, what shots do you want to see? What shots don't you want to see? We talk through that, and today she gave me exactly what I wanted to see. And I think the thing, the misconception sometimes is that if they get a shot off, the defender hasn't done their job. That's absolutely not the case. The shots that they were forcing, Allie in particular, were fantastic, and it just makes it so easy to do my job.